I know the history of Superman. Superman came at a time when Jews were oppressed in the U.S. Mm. And so they needed a Jewish icon. Most people don't even know that Superman was originally a Jewish hero. Hello and welcome. It's time for us to have another interesting conversation right here in the studio. My name is Tita Lyle Oyinson and I am a big fan of comic books. Hmm. Did you know that? I'm not a child anymore. I might be a child at heart, but there's something about comics that helped groom me, that helped me grow, helped my perspective on life. And uh, imagine my surprise when about 10 years ago, I came across a young lady and her husband who were actually making their own comics. My mind was blown and uh, honestly so many different amazing conversations have happened over the years and it's grown and grown and grown. I'm talking to Mr. Jide Martins today. He is the CEO of Comic Republic. Welcome to the studio. Hi, Titi. Hi. Hi. Sorry, I lost you for a bit. There. Okay, not to worry, not to worry. Uh, not to worry at all. Uh, it's really interesting what's happening uh, with your work on Facebook. I say it's one of the interesting things that, you know, is happening lately, mm. uh, but not the first of its kind. It's just that Facebook is so big that, you know, it, it made headlines. We've done stuff with BBC, Al Jazeera, mm. loads of international organizations we even did something with stampic ibtc recently where we created a mascot and did a whole real you know okay. um, stampic man is what it was called super app Amazing. stuff like that so it's been very interesting but did you ever Recently, think did you ever think the journey would get this far because this is i can still remember comic-con in alausa do you remember Comic Con yeah. in Alausa, where it was just a few tables yeah, and you know an MC that didn't really know much about comics, <laughs> and here you are today. I remember. Funny enough, it still hasn't gotten to where I knew it would get to. Okay. So I've always known it would get here and beyond. You know, it's what drives me every day. So when I wake up in the morning, there's just this certainty of where I know this is going to get to, and just makes me do everything that needs to be done so let's break down how it all began let's talk about the first spark the first idea uh what were you doing and what was the drive to be honest breaking down where where it all began is almost going to be like telling my life story because it's been since i could remember and i'm not saying that lightly it's like I just grew up loving comics and making comics. You know, I used to take all the exercise books my mom used to buy. Um, there's this incident where she caught me ripping out the white sheets at the back of my writing book just because I wanted to draw comics in them. Mm. And, you know, all the exercise books she buys are meant to be for school. I would convert all of them into issue one, issue two, issue three, and used to chop a lot of cane for it. Yeah, honestly. This wow. is from, you know, like junior secondary school or something like that and I've always made give it to my friends and they're always excited and you know they all read it and that was it's, for me that was a sign that this could be a thing because they were always waiting for me to finish the next issue or the next episode to read it mm. and of course you know you got into university you know you now start to try and do adulting at some point <laughs> in time and so, as they say adulting is a scam <laughs> exactly you know but I found out that, you know, when the babes were not looking and, you know, when I was with my guys, I would go back to my room and I would actually, you know, get pen and paper and still do. Um, fast forward, left, started doing the fashion business, which you know, mm. you know, and no matter how late I was done or no matter how busy I was, every week I would just somehow find the need to try and make a comic, you know, mm. do a couple of pages because I had the story in my head and needed to put on paper. So to be honest, it has always been there. I almost feel, and I'm, it might just be me being delusional, but I feel like this is what I was made for. Like I was mm. born for this because it has just always been there. I've always known clearly, like I need to do this. 
and you know when i started making money from the fashion business because i was doing well with that i thought okay it's time for me to invest in my passion okay but for me it was more than a passion it was more like a belief in this thing i believe in so much you know and because i've been following comics for a long time i i know the history of superman superman came at a time when jews were oppressed in the u.s mm. and so they needed a jewish icon most people don't even know that superman was originally a jewish hero mm. but you know eventually was bought up by dc mm. and became what it is today batman was at the time when you know america was trying to impress itself that it was a wealthy country that did well for its citizens meanwhile in reality there was recession you know so we had this man who was very wealthy but yet would go out and do what needs to be done to protect the environment it was the way for them to try and inspire people to be better and captain america for example was when america was in the first world war so i knew all of these things and i knew how you know a country like the u.s had inspired its own people with comic books you know i always ask people that look at the most popular superheroes let's take superman let's mm. take spider-man let's take wonder woman let's take captain america they are all in the colors mm. of the american flag mm, right? true very and true is just telling people basically that americans are the superpower being an american is so cool and then as an american you can achieve anything just because you believe you can mm. i mean why does an alien have to be american right and he will tell you you know true justice and the american dream that's what superman and alien said <laughs> seriously so from time i've always known the power of comic books and how it can influence you know, I dare to say manipulate the thoughts of the generation. But to make matters worse, what made me now say, okay, I need to do this, is that it just suddenly, 10 years ago, it became superhero season. Mm. We found out that, you know, Man of Steel was coming out, everybody was crazy about it. True. We had series like Arrow, Flash. Yeah. And those things where they were, the episode raking about a million dollars. Mm. Right? The episode. And the world had suddenly woken up to superheroes. They've been there for aeons, but yeah. it's like the world is suddenly recognized. Oh, okay, we do have heroes. You know, I think it was at a point where we really just wanted to escape reality a lot more. And, you know, we didn't really, I still say the world doesn't really believe that much in religion as at now, mm-hmm. you know, and um, a lot more fairy tales. So having people who are closer to being human, but, you know, happen to, Gain powers or stories in that light, you know, start becoming a thing that people were interested in. And we had this, you know, split where being a superhero actually became profitable. And I remember then so when there was only Silverbird, I'm sure you remember that period, um, cinemas. Superman, Man of Steel, the very first Superman movie that was coming out after a very long time, I think it was almost 10 years or more, was about to come out and Nigeria went crazy. You know, we just felt like there was almost like a festival about it. Yeah. You know, this big page. And, you know, <laughs> I had done this two page comic book, you know, that was of a character that was a lot like Superman, but different in his own way. And I thought, okay, it's time, you know, how will I get it to many people? Since the whole nation is crazy about this thing coming out now, especially yeah. Lagos. Yeah. Maybe I can put this comic book at the back of. Of the silver best cinema, oh. so I created this comic book, yeah, and then I started pitching it because they were doing the ads for Superman almost two or three months before. Mm. So I did it page comic book that I was going to put at the back of the silver bed fly. If you remember, then you used to just walk in and pick up the flyer. Sure, sure. Before the first time, yes. yeah. So then it was about two hundred thousand. This was about ten years ago. Wow, and that was a lot of money. they charged you that oh. much? Goodness, I'm telling you, but it was <laughs> going to be distributed nationwide True. at every. Silver cinema. I think there was one in Lagos, Potakot, and Abuja at that point in time. And I thought this was the avenue to get my, you know, character known. Because I had read comic books so much and I was invested in it. I literally knew how the business worked abroad. It was all about popularity. So I, you know, pitched to a couple of people, got um, them first banks advertised in the book, and that's how I was able to put it in the cinema. Mm-hmm. And, you know, the rest was history. I remember a lot of people telling me it won't work. Mm. You know, Nigerians are great in superheroes. But I'm like, but we're about to watch Man of Steel and everybody's Superman, yeah, yeah, yeah. 
<laughs> and you know the fans were just amazing we just we immediately started getting fan arts and people being excited and stuff like that and you know thanks to people like you the media has just been <laughs> um i honestly was extremely impressed because my my geeky side was immediately activated and even if I wasn't um, thinking of reading it at that time, I just wanted to own it. I wanted to be part of it. I felt like it was a movement coming to life and I wanted to be on a moving train. Um, but that was 10 years ago, right? A lot has happened yeah. since then. Now, this is the first, Comic Republic is the first and only African comic book brand to create the world's first crypto comic and you were able to raise over $200,000 in funding. So that story must be a big one. You need to let us in on how that happened. Well, right now, it's actually over $900,000 <coughs> in funding from that comic. As a wow. Plan. Yeah. So, again, one of the major things I focused on then, even when it wasn't popular, I, thought, I told everybody, look, it doesn't make sense for us to make printed comics. How do you distribute you know, the world is going to a place where we're always in digital. And this was 10 years ago. And I thought we need to jump on that movement now. And we are still primarily optimized for, you know, digital screens. I spend 90% of my time working on our digital platform. And most people don't understand it. But I give them simple things. I mean, look at Facebook itself, for example. It was built by Zuckerberg himself, right? Look at the most popular platforms, looking at YouTube, Instagram, right? Uh, what are these guys selling? It's the experience of the platforms, the ability for you to go in and get content. Mm. And that, you know, started our journey into the digital sphere. <laughs> and then we go now where the world is crazy about cryptocurrency and digital media. Because the truth is, we live in the digital world these days, Right. It almost feels like everything first happens digitally and then it manifests physically, to be honest, right? You want to communicate with someone, nobody really picks up, you know, um, a handset anymore and does like a physical call, you first send the message. You want to buy something, most people are going to buy it online. 90% of the things, most of your registration, whatever it is, is being done online. So it really feels like everything is happening digitally and we're just carrying out the results physically. So it only makes sense that, okay, we start to tell stories that focus on digital space. Okay. And when we got clients who reached out to us to say, okay, look, we want to make a digital comic in collaboration with Comic Republic, we were like, brilliant. We worked with him, came up with the story, released the comic, and as expected, it did very well. Same with the project we're doing with Facebook at the moment. Mm. So I'm going to touch on the Facebook project in a second, but can you actually explain what a digital comic actually represents? Is it that it's the distribution alone that is digital? Uh, is it still the good old storyboard kind of comic? I'm trying to figure out what a digital comic actually means. Okay, so it's a bit of both. When I say a bit of both, it's both... The creation and the distribution. Okay. Right? My whole team, nobody draws with paper okay. anymore. Okay. I can't remember the last time I literally saw paper in my office. I'm thinking about <laughs> it. Apart from the printed comic books that we have. Okay. Right? And we print that for special events where people are coming to our stands. But if not, most of it is mostly digital. We all use drawing tabs now and digital pens. So everything, even the whole creative process is now done digitally. Even starting from the script is typed of course. online and then we draw and we transfer. We even store online now. We have drives. Yeah, the drives that we store things in. Mm. Then when we're done, we actually have our own platform and that's how we distribute it. Right? We have this where you click on it. We have comic readers that optimize and in a couple of seconds, the comic is up. You can read it. It's very light. Right? Our comic books right now are usually around 4 MB. Oh, interesting. You know, you know, so everything literally from start to finish, creative to client, mm. is digital, which is why we call it a digital comic. And in today's world where we have NFTs, right? Fabulous. Yes. You know, 
everything is now moving there. You know, we're actively working on NFT projects at the moment mm. where, you know, you'll be able to actually buy the comics, you know, from your digital wallet and even own assets because we'll have just limited mm. issues and, you know, we'll have strategies like before you buy the next issue, you must have issue one. Yeah. And then you on your own can sell the first issue, making you also gain from it. So if we have just So you can trade, copies, basically trade your comics online as well. Thank you very much. Amazing. Amazing. I love it. Uh, I'm just going to throw in that, you know, there is an Africa based blockchain uh, called Bantu blockchain, but I'm pleased that the world is moving in that direction, especially here in Africa. But then have you considered, well, obviously you must have considered, but can you share with us what your demographic actually looks like? So the assumption would be from old school times that comics were for kids. I beg to differ, but then I'm not really good on building an argument around it, if you know what I mean. So who are your demographic? Who are your paying audience? And uh, where does the money come from? Okay, good. Thank you. So that Comics for Kids is now a myth. Oh. It's no longer that way. And most of our audience are 84 and men between the age of 18 to 45. Goodness me. Right? 18 to 45. I would not have guessed that. Nine. And that's 84%. So the other 16% is broken down to women and kids below 18. Right? Okay. This is also because really the comic generation started with my generation. Mm. You know, that's mm. when it became a thing. And we were still following it up. Right now, these kids are really into games. And again, the whole world has gone online, which is also why we're pushing the online comics they're more into things that are for lack of a better word more physically you know an experience than you know actually having to read and that's that's why we're moving and that's why we need to maintain the digital platform mm. so yeah comics no longer just for kids kids enjoy it especially young men um because also you know they see like icons they want to be just action figures you know they're experiencing being an action figure in proxy without them being there well yeah how do we make money mm. our comics are actually free okay right but it's the same question how do you think instagram makes money mm. ads how do you think? <laughs> you all right then yeah. so going so, digital was also an advantage because you could put in ads in there and ad revenue can come through it makes complete we've sense we've had mm. ads for people like Samsung right okay. in our books where our characters are using Samsung phones and things like that okay. but the good thing about it being digital also is that because people are now trying to provide experiences for their customers right we have people acquiring licenses to put our comics on their platforms right mm-hmm. so not only would, are we selling ad space we're actually selling the rights to display the comics themselves Right, that's the one. But most importantly, and this is the part where I am really sad that our government is not putting infrastructure in the places that we're actually exporting talents. Wow. Right? Wow. We have, for example, been dealing with companies who pay upwards of fifty thousand dollars for us to make comic books for them. Right? The Metai Night comic with right now is averaging close to almost a million dollars right now. The clients Participation in that was over a hundred thousand dollars just to make that series, which is just wow. ten comics. Wow! Right, so we're looking at about ten thousand dollars margin just to make one comic in terms of revenue. Wow! Right now, we do projects like storyboards. Um, we've done motion comics for people like DW. We've mm. done for Out Era. Um, mm. We've just done it again for Facebook. Mm. All of these companies are not Nigerian com- companies. So what are we doing? We're mm. literally bringing in finance into the country because comic books, illustration, and storytelling is a global phenomenon. It's not just a Nigerian business. It literally is more profitable than the standard lawyer, doctor, contractor that you have these days, right? We are going to go into a project very soon that may be close to 100,000 euros. Just saying, mm. right? All of this because we're exporting raw talent. Over the period of two or three years, I'm sure we have used close to 200 indigenous artists, young men and women who are getting paid by foreign money. 
imagine if we have the proper infrastructure, sorry, mm. to service major movie studios, mm. um, to service major gaming platforms around the world. And all of this, the movie industry, I don't want to tell you how much they're making. It's a billion dollar business or more. Black Panther alone made more money than our GDP as a country. <laughs> true. Right? True. Very yeah. true. Mm. So, if we're servicing countries, places like India, China, the US, people who are into entertainment in various ways, you see them wanting to make games now, right now, they go to places like India or China, mm. right? You see people in the US who want to do illustrations for various things. It could be product illustration, it could be characterization, anything. They either go to the US or they go to places like China also. Meanwhile, we have these talents here who are willing and will end in dollars. Why is our government not putting infrastructure mm. to make sure that we have a training school, we have power, we have things where we can actually bring raw cash into the country. It's still a mystery to me. We're still focusing on things that will run out of oil. Mm. We're still focusing on how many lawyers can we really have? How many buildings are we going to put up? You cannot hold back digital content or entertainment. And it's starting to show the billionaires of the world today are the Facebooks, the Amazons, mm. and the guys into entertainment. There's no more the oil tycoons. True. So. Hmm. Honestly, I, I wish I could you know, maybe I should send you my CV. I'm a good comic book reader. Our reader is getting paid. <laughs> I honestly, well, I, I know that you're also doing, nice. you're also doing which motion. Is an park. Mm, yes, we is. are. Which mm. is an essential part, which is why we give it out free, mm. right? Yeah. You know, we give it out free because the more readers we have, the better, the more value we have, yes, on Amazing. our product. So Amazing. we give it, we, we allow the readers to enjoy the entertainment free and we allow the corporate pay for it but please go on. uh let's talk a bit about what happened with facebook recently um so facebook approached us that they wanted to do a campaign on no false news so okay and like i said earlier you know the digital space has been a primary focus for us because literally we live our lives online mm. these days true and true. because it was very much in line with one of our objectives which is to ensure that we have a safer digital space a place where you know um it's so easy everybody goes online to get information now it's almost like once it's online it's verified mm. and we do know how many things especially recently with the pandemic that has passed how a lot of false um, prescriptions, mm. how a lot of false intelligence has been going around, how, you know, for example, like, um, a lot of people just lost money on quid game coin or something like that. Imagine that. Online. Yeah, exactly. Because most people just followed the trend and did not verify where the news is coming from or the information is coming from. Um, we jumped at it. It was, you know, and we first, we were honored that they actually, you know, got in touch with us, um, to work on this project. It was quite exciting. Uh, but most importantly, it was, you know, to push a position that is very dear to our hearts. Honestly, um, I'm really, I was so pleased to see the email because I, I subscribed to your mailing list some years ago. And interestingly, the email address I used to subscribe was uh, my book club that I started. That was uh, eight years ago, if you can remember. And I got a new device and logged back into that email. And as soon as I did, your notification came up. And I'm like, where have they been? What have they been up to? And then I'm seeing so many great things. And I can only say, really, thank you so, so much for doing what you do. And I can only encourage you to just keep it going. Keep it going. With regards to the NFTs, I, I'm, I'm interested in buying a few, uh, <laughs> a few comments. Please send some links my way as soon as you get the chance. And uh, please don't hesitate to reach out to us when you have some other great announcements. It would be great for you to have a podcast as well uh, where you could discuss these things. For instance, if uh, you have the opportunity to speak with someone in, let's say, a state government right now on how they can improve or create some kind of infrastructure that would help your industry, and maybe just a few sentences, what would you say? I would say that we need, most importantly, is facilities where we can actually build professionals in the field. 
um, just because we're serving an international community and standards are very high. And then also funding to develop this personnel. Um, for anything that will generate major income, we need to train people in order for them to be professionals in that field. And for them to do that during the training period, a lot of countries may will help if the government is, you know, subsidizing at least the training to help these people actually earn some kind of living while they are learning and, you know, they'll be able to stand on their own. You know, so supporting capacities where I would say they will need to come in. We're not saying um, come and invest in a place where you are not sure we make money. No, we're saying build the capacity to make money. That's what we're saying. Um, let's have the infrastructure to build capacity. Amen to that. I am so pleased you could take our time today. We've had a really interesting conversation and I have a feeling we're going to be having a few more over the next few months as obviously your plans materialize. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Jide Martin. Let me uh, read out your profile uh, quickly so that the whole world knows the reason why I'm gushing over this gentleman. Now, Mr. Jide Martin is the founder of Africa's first digital comic book company, Comic Republic. He's an illustrator, designer, producer, and entrepreneur, someone with a passion for shaping Africa's narrative through compelling stories and art. Now, he was born in Lagos, Nigeria, and his desire to showcase the beauty of African art led to the creation of the largest comic book company in Africa. And as of right now, the only company to publish bi-weekly comics to over 1.5 million page views on thecomicrepublic.com. Now, uh, his books have received critical acclaim on five continents with features on CNN, Forbes, BBC, Comixology, Al Jazeera, for quality of the art and content produced and of course the potential that Comic Republic Universe presents. I'm so, so pleased to say he's my friend and uh, once again, thank you so, so much for talking to us today. Thanks, Titi. And I can't, you know, um, say enough thank you to the media, people like yourself that has helped push the message forward. You guys are, you know, a great part of our growth so far and just want to say thank you. You're welcome, and thank you for doing what you do. <laughs> All right, then, you can always reach out to us at Africa Biz Radio on Twitter and, of course, at Africa Business Radio on Instagram, LinkedIn, and Facebook. Can't wait to hear from you. I am at TT the Dynamite on Instagram. And, uh, yeah, if you're a comic book lover, reach out to us. Send us a comment or review and uh, check us out with our Africa Business Radio podcast app. All right, then. Have a great day.